in order to best understand what technology can and cannot do, whether it can be adopted and whether it will make a difference, you need to do that in a country context. And part of the reason is the fact that uh, first, um, there are trade-offs. Typically when you implement uh, new technologies, there are those who benefit, there are those who lose, and you need uh, to create uh, a dialogue uh, to make sure that uh, all parties involved are pulling in the same direction, taking into account the trade-offs that are there. Um, second, uh, I think the Commission is very clear right now that uh, you need the bundling of uh, policy, uh, business, and certainly users uh, in order to have a successful um, application uh, of uh, technology. And that bundling uh, happens only in the context of uh, countries. Um, and since we had taken a stance that the conversation on technology has been a lot more on developed uh, countries, uh, anxieties about job losses from robots, uh, etc. cetera. Um, most of the developing countries don't have those jobs to lose anyway because they haven't yet uh, industrialized but they worry about whether that opportunity uh, to go up the escalator of development, uh, passing them, uh, whether there are other opportunities which can actually be facilitated uh, through these new technological changes. Yeah. Professor Blue, when you speak about a technology and of course the worry if it is a friend or a foe when it comes to job uh, jobs that will be lost and then Strive just the other day was saying that uh, why should you be worried about the jobs that are not even there yet? Maybe this is going to create them. So tell me about uh, job creation on the back of technology in the agriculture sector and uh, maybe about uh, the production, increase on production in the same. Yeah, um, in the agricultural sector, uh, to a very large extent, uh, so far, the conversation on technology has really centered a lot more about getting productivity uh, increased on the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you uh, deliver new knowledge, uh, better crop husbandry, uh, in order to increase uh, that productivity? And not enough on off-farm. Uh, to look at the whole value chain. Um, you know, uh, with almost 30% uh, crop losses uh, post-harvest, uh, definitely, uh, you know, if you uh, improve productivity, you still have to deal with the fact that tomatoes will go to rot just because they can't find their way to the market. Um, and very often, you have a disconnect. You may have industries that are starved of tomatoes uh, to make uh, a whole range of uh, processed foodstuff. And you have farmers at the same time who are actually uh, suffering losses just because they couldn't get the tomatoes uh, to whoever that needs it. In this conversation, yeah. do you yeah. see that uh, maybe uh, PPPs or what we call uh, public-private partnerships could actually step in and uh, solve this particular conversation. When you look at Rwanda, there is some aggregators. Of course, there are not a lot of them, but just a few of them. And uh, there have been some significant changes. So do you see this as something that could bring a sustainable solution? Oh, of course. And technology, particularly digital technology, sure. offers the platform for uh, making logistics much more effective mm. uh, and uh, bridging the trust gaps between those who want uh, agricultural commodities and those who supply, uh, those that want sometimes not sure whether they are getting the they are going to get the quality they need 
and those who want to sell whether they're going to get paid uh, by this particular person. And you, when you bridge that gap through information that can flow much more quickly and making networks much more cohesive, you already are creating uh, an opportunity for uh, both sides uh, to do well. Um, so looking at connectedness uh, of agriculture to markets, uh, not just domestic, but also international ones, mm -hmm. is very, very important for adding value to whatever that is already being produced and for removing the disincentive from waste uh, when there is more that is being produced. Yeah, so I think it is extremely important that there is this partnership, mm -hmm. but that partnership has to be facilitated also by a good ecosystem right. uh, from the government side, mm -hmm. good regulations, uh, and incentives for startups uh, really to, uh, to thrive, um, including those that offer solutions uh, for uh, better matching between those who supply and those that actually demand these you goods. Say, you, you said something about uh, good governance uh, regulations. Mm. What is wrong with the regulations that are currently in, uh, in play? I think number one is there isn't sufficient boldness mm. by um, regulators to allow enough space for innovation right. to lead uh, and give space for testing uh, and then only do uh, regulation after you have monitored and gotten uh, some reasonable uh, data to make an assessment. Uh, the tendency has been to uh, want all risks uh, covered before you allow something actually to proceed. And that has tended really to stifle Mm -hmm. uh, inventions to stifle um, those that uh, develop solutions. Mm 